This is the ThinkPad T14. My ThinkPad T14. Three months ago I bought it for $300 to have a portable work machine and it is almost the best laptop I've ever owned. It's relatively modern with a 6-core CPU, a great keyboard, USB-C charging and a sturdy body. And judging by its condition, it was barely used. For $300 I got a basically new laptop. With one problem. The display. ThinkPads are business laptops in the truest sense of the word. A large amount of them are purchased in bulk by businesses for their employees. They aren't cheap to begin with, so any option that does not directly impact productivity is cut. Touchscreens can affect productivity, but good brightness and wide gamut do not. That's why most ThinkPads come with basic displays that are so bad for a thousand dollar laptop that Lenovo deserves an award. Take for example my T14. It originally cost around the same as a MacBook or Dell XPS. And the base model just 4 years ago came with a TN panel and HD resolution in 2020. My first ThinkPad, the T480, had the worst display I've seen in past 10 years. It had 50% sRGB, 200 nits of brightness, visible touchscreen stripes and such poor response time that any game faster than Heroes 3 looked like Shrek's Swamp. And even today, in 2024, they still sell laptops for $1500, with panel just slightly better than their own device that cost 5 times cheaper. It's around 60% sRGB. The display remains the main issue preventing this from truly feeling like a premium laptop. It's a good base, but numbers speak for themselves. My T14 barely outputs 200 nits, insufficient even indoors. It has weak color coverage, but decent contrast. Plus, my unit came with a single channel memory and 500 GB SSD. For a portable workstation, that's far from ideal. At the beginning of the video, I called the T14 almost my best laptop. With a few upgrades, I aim to make it the best without any caveats. I have a list of requirements I'd like to meet. 350 nits, a comfortable starting point. White color gamut. Battery life must stay as good as it is now. After using this laptop for 3 months, I've come to... I've come to appreciate the battery life. Cause 8 hours in YouTube is convenient. 9.5 hours in PC Mark is impressive, so no QHD resolution, no higher refresh rate, just full HD. Maybe a better contrast ratio, and it would be great if I don't screw up the response time. There are three ways to go about this. Ideally, I'd check if there were any decent options that come with the laptop from the factory. If one of those suits my needs, all I need is to find the exact panel model and use it as a drop-in replacement. For the T14 Gen 1, there are a few good options, but the most interesting to me is the 400 nit IPS panel, which is marked as low power. There were three panels available, and which one you actually got is random. The second way is to google something like model of my laptop, display panel upgrade, Reddit. This is especially helpful for users of older ThinkPads, because folks with something like the T460 or T440 never had the luxury to get really good displays such as this 400 nit unit. So the first method just wouldn't work for them. But they can install the thing. And many other panels compatible as well. Reddit is incredibly useful for this kind of info. People write their stories about upgrades so we can find valuable details about the process. Or you can search for something newer and better yourself. Displays are evolving fast, and it would be a shame to miss out on new technology just because you was too lazy to check. We need a starting point. Using HWinfo, I found out the exact model of my panel. Copy, paste. The site we are interested in is Panel Look, a fantastic resource I'll be spending the rest of my search. From here, I learned that my panel is supposed to output to 50 nits, but it only delivers 200. Next, I need to figure out the connector type. It's a 30-pin connector. In theory, I can swap for a 40-pin one, but I won't do it. Also, take a note of which side the connector is on, the bottom right, and where the backlight control board is. It sticks out in the middle. There are some models where the board flush to the panel's frame. If I buy something like that, it will be electrically compatible, 
but inside the case it won't work, simply because the display cable is too short and it will cause some additional pressure in this area, so just pass by the options that are not like for like with your stock panel. Also you can write down the panel's dimensions and thickness. With this information I dive back into the site and use filters to weed out the obvious junk. Honestly, once you catch the rhythm, the process takes around 40 minutes to go through the most interesting options. So don't ask me in the comments if a panel will fit your Acer Aspire, I don't know. Here is the final list of potentially good panels. What really blows my mind are the prices. For the cost of a budget 1TB SSD you can dramatically change the entire feel of your laptop. The factory installed panels that were optionally available for the T14 look amazing, especially the one from Inelux. There's even a 500 nit option that is not that great in real life, but I have plenty of room to choose. So from this list I will buy… nothing. Well, initially I didn't have time to wait for something to be shipped from AliExpress, so I decided to order locally, because of course all these panels are listed as in stock are actually in stock. Look, they are in stock here, and here, and here, and no one would lie. Let me give them a call. Oh, they don't have it. And they don't have it either. Why do you even list it as available? Maybe it's different in your country. But here in Ukraine, these spare part sellers are acting like real estate agents. You see something listed online as available. You call them, and these people start acting dumb. Oh, we don't actually have the exact thing you're looking for, but we have something just like it. Exactly what you need, identical, just twice as bad and more expensive. I called every single store that listed the panels as in stock and guess what? One actually arrived. It was the top factory option, 400 nits, white color gamut, with a tiny problem. I ordered this specific panel. The label on the chassis matched perfectly. Through AIDA64 it showed as a completely different model. The panel specs I received were even slightly better in terms of performance, but the model wasn't what was advertised. And honestly, it's not a big deal as long as I got my 400 nits. Oi. Oi. So if you're planning to upgrade your panel, be aware that it's a slippery road no matter where you order, from local supplier or directly from China, in both cases there is a high chance to be scammed. Guess how I know. But I think locals are still a better deal, just because they have better return policy. In the end I went with the best option that was truly available. This was installed in the MSI Prestige EVO and some Acer Swift models, a standard mid-tier panel, except for one thing, the power consumption. It only draws 1.5 watts. Most other panels don't come anywhere near that. On average it's more like 3-4 watts, but this one just 1.5. Replacing the panel can vary depending on the laptop, so follow the guides on the internet. In my case it was straightforward, I just had to remove the bezel, which is held by clips, and by the strongest tape ever invented. No joke, it took me like 45 minutes just to remove these three tiny strips of tape, even though the whole process without it taking like a lazy two minutes. The B140 HAN 6.2 was never used in any ThinkPads, and you can only find out about it if you search manually, as I've shown previously. The point is, the search paid off. Beyond its lower power consumption, it also much lighter. You can really feel it, feel the difference in your hands as it sheds over 100 grams. Now the laptop almost matches in terms of weight with old MacBook Air, and you can really feel it. In the video, the panel will be held only by the bezel. Don't do it and secure the work with a special double-sided tape. Otherwise it looked bad when the display is barely holding in its place and can be damaged due to bending. But now let me reap the fruits of labor. First of all, wow! The improvement is noticeable with the naked eye. 
Simple things like displaying a white point as actually white are finally happening. My old panel had a strong greenish tint that no amount of calibration could fix. The laptop now feels more cohesive. The display quality finally matches the premium feel of the chassis. There is no longer that glaring mismatch where the poor panel undermined the overall experience. For example, I never thought that the Lenovo logo could bring me some visual satisfaction. It used to look like an orange carrot. Now it's a rich, deep red. Or this default wallpaper from Windows 11. Really like it and use it everywhere. Before the upgrade it looks lifeless and dull, which had a kind of melancholic charm. But now I see distinct shades where there were none before. Literally, what used to be plain grey now has hints of blue, yellow, green. Now it's lively, vibrant scene. The laptop has become more inviting in every way. I've got plenty of images to compare and the biggest difference are in red, purple and green spectrums. Areas dominated by blue and yellow show little improvement, but overall it's a win. Also there are improvements to the contrast ratio. My calibration device tends to underestimate it, so I don't usually show it in my monitor tests. But here even my calibrator claims a 60% increase. This makes the image appear much nicer and, well, helps mask the disappointing brightness. Again, seriously, I already accepted 300 nits instead of 400 and it still manages to fall short by 15%. I wish panel manufacturers got paid based on how well they meet their own specs. Because besides the brightness, I'm also missing a bit in terms of color gamut. It seems like parts that don't pass quality control for finished laptops often end up as a replacement part. Response time? It got even worse. The battery life? Much better. Even accounting for some potential errors in the tests, since the data looks a bit odd. I managed to squeeze out an extra 1 to 2 hours of battery life, while having better colors, more brightness and better FPS. Because the data on the right was collected with the dual channel memory, whereas on the left it's single channel. The ThinkPad T14 only had a discrete GPU on Intel models. AMD versions rely on integrated graphics, which are heavily dependent on memory bandwidth. One channel is always soldered onto the motherboard, either 8 or 16 gigs, minus 16. But out of the box my unit had no second channel, meaning no decent FPS either. I can't call modern games playable even after having a beer. Or two beers. Or even three. Titles like Hellblade Senna's Sacrifice won't run no matter how low you set the graphics, it just don't work. Same with the Cyberpunk. There's no point I'm saying yeah, I can lower my expectations enough to enjoy it. <laughs> no, the frame rate is so low, it barely qualifies as the game, more like a GIF animation. Even World of Tanks Blitz on low can't reach 120 FPS cap when I plug my external monitor, it's 1440p. The only playable games were Forza Horizon 5 with FSR enabled and Flat Out 2. That's bad. The laptop is capable of more, it just needs good old dual-channel memory. My Ryzen supports DDR4 3200, and most modules run with the JDEC 22 timings. Kingston decided to stand out. For an extra 2 bucks you can get gaming timings. CL20. <laughs> and only the first one. <laughs> so I went for it. The system accepted, and even solder chips can handle these settings. And since this is my backup computer, meant for work even under rocket attacks on energy infrastructure, 500 gigs is simply not enough. I thought the 2TB Kingston NV2 was a good choice, affordable, power efficient with the single sided chips which is important for the T14 and decent speed. I thought so. After filling it to about 25%, the laptop's performance took a nose dive. There were long delays for every action and constant stuttering not recommended. It's better to go for a 1TB SSD with a better controller, like Kingston KC3000. 
After upgrading the RAM, the performance difference was so significant that I had to take the laptop apart multiple times, swapping the second module in and out, because I expected 15-20% increase, maybe 30%. In the worst cases, the FPS gained 50%. Hellblade now manages to hit 30 FPS, which is playable, since most of the game is relatively slow and doesn't demand as high FPS, though the occasional stuttering still spoils the experience. It is the same with the Cyberpunk. Lowering my expectations drastically makes it somewhat playable, especially after dealing with the 15 FPS in single channel mode. World of Tanks Blitz finally hit its proper 120 FPS cap occasionally dip into around 100 FPS. And Forza didn't just run smoother, but gained enough performance headroom to switch from upscaling to native resolution. Overall, I'm almost satisfied with the result. The T14 has become faster, lighter, with better battery life and has a good amount of memory to work. The display has become noticeably more colorful and a bit brighter. From a distance, you can even call it a success. But deep down, it feels like uh, it feels like a half measure. I would call it the minimal acceptable level, considering the nerves and effort spent. For the same money, I could have gotten significantly more brightness and less motion blur in games. If only I have more more time and more luck to buy a proper theme. Thank you for your support, likes and subscribes. My name is Roman. See you in the next video.